Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create a very simple puzzle book that you can self-publish using KDP. I'm going to try and make this video as quickly as possible just to show you the key points. So let's dive straight into it. Now there are three reasons why I love puzzle books. Reason number one is they are so simple to make and I'm going to show you how you can do that using Book Bolt. Reason number two is that you can create puzzle books that are evergreen or that are seasonal and it's a good idea to do both. Obviously we have Q4 coming up so we have Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas, Hanukkah, New Year, so many big celebrations that you could create puzzle books around. But you're also going to want to create some that are those evergreen topics that people can buy throughout the year. Now the third reason is that they are so easy to build a brand around too. And being able to build a brand around them is really beneficial to your KDP business. Because not only can you connect all of your books together as a brand on Amazon, but you can also start to build your own email list. To do this, you would simply add a page within your puzzle book that has a website for people to go to, offer them a freebie and in exchange you get that email address. Now what that means is every time you create a puzzle book you have a list of people that you know are interested in buying your products. You would simply send out an email to people, add your Amazon link and you've got a whole bunch of people there that you know are interested in your books. So we are going to be using Book Bolt to create our puzzle books because they've just made it so, so simple. So remember, before you even begin to create, you need to be doing your research. And that's where these tools in Book Bolt are so, so handy. Make sure that you are taking advantage of them so that you can check out what the competition looks like. Um, you're going to be looking at books that are selling regularly that are in a similar style to what you want to make. You're taking a look at what size is the book? How many pages? How many puzzles do they have? Um, are they using large font? What keywords are they using? The price point? All of that information you are going to need before you even begin to think about creating it. But I don't want to spend too much time on that because if you're looking at making puzzle books, you've probably already started to make low content books before. So you probably already know how to do all of that research stuff. So when we go into create and into the book bolt studio, we are going to be creating a new project. Now, in order to be able to use book bolts, um, puzzle interiors, you are going to need a pro subscription. If you haven't got one already, I have a code in the description box for you where you can get 20% off, um, off of that subscription. So, we're going to be looking at the um, just the interior for this example. I've named the project Word Search and I've chosen a trim size of 8.5 by 11. Again, this is the sort of stuff that you will know from the research that you've done um, in terms of comparable books and um, and what what size is selling. So I've chosen 120 pages and we're going to click Create. Now, when you create your book, you'll notice, well, you, you will have noticed from your research that a lot of the books have um, a this belongs to page at the beginning. They'll also have, have a how to page that shows you um, how to do word searches. You need to make sure that you are including those in, in your puzzle books. Now, I'm going to be focusing on purely word search books. So if we come over here to page templates, you will see all of these interiors that you get with your Book Bolt subscription. Um, if we go down, there are a ton of different puzzles that you can choose from. You can do a few of each and make it a more varied activity book. I'm going to go just with word searches for this. Now, again, you are going to want to leave a couple of pages, at least at the beginning of your book, where you, um, put all your introductory stuff. But for this um, example, I'm just going to select a couple of pages because what BookBot is asking us to do here is select the pages that we want the word searches themselves to appear on. Now, just to, to save time so I'm not creating 50 different word searches, I'm just going to select two and I'm going to press continue to options. Now up here, this is where you are going to decide what exactly your word searches are going to look like. So how many words do you want per puzzle? So if I was going for a children's book, I'd probably stick around the 12 words. 
But for a standard adult, I'm going to be looking around 24. But again, it's completely up to you what you do. The solutions I want to be um, all together at the end of the book. So I'm going to leave that as it is. Now I've got these two ticked because I like to use diagonal words and reverse words. I probably wouldn't use reverse words um, for a children's book. And if I was creating something that was aimed at very young children, I probably wouldn't use diagonal words either. But again, it's going to be um, completely dependent on, on who your target customer is. You're going to select the font that you want to use and the size. Make sure that the font, don't go too fancy with it. It needs to be very clear um, to make the puzzles or the word search in this case um, easy to complete. I want the clues to be in columns. I don't want them to be sorted um, short to long or long to short. I want them to be kind of random and I want them to be um, centered underneath the word search. Again, I'm going to keep the font the same as, um, as the actual word search itself. And now in this section here, this is where we are going to input the words that we want to use for the word search. Now I like to use ChatGPT for this and you can see here, if for example, I was deciding to do a botanical themed word search, I've asked ChatGPT to create a simple bullet list of 50 single words relating to botanicals. Obviously you're going to use a lot more than 50 words, but just as a, um, as a beginner. So it's come up with here a list of different types of words to do with flowers and plants and things. Now you want to take that list and turn it into a CSV file so that BookBolt can read it. And you can see here, I've already uploaded a Botanicals um, example for you. And then I'm just going to press continue. Now here it's going to ask me, where do I want the solutions to be? So the first two pages are, um, so the first pages are the word searches themselves. And then of course, you're going to want to give the answers. Now, if I was creating this properly, I would have a lot more um, pages with the actual puzzles on and then the, um, the solutions right at the very end. But just for ease of this example, we're going to leave it as this. And then it's going to create it for you. Now here you can see we have the word search and then it's given us a list of 24 words that it's taken from that list that we got from ChatGPT. Now, what you're going to want to do now is to move it around. Um, you can resize it. You are probably going to want to um, add a text at the top and just name it something. We're just going to, for ease, call it puzzle one. And then just pop that uh, on the top here so that when the customer is completing it, they you know this is puzzle one, add the same thing to the solutions page so that they can find the answers easily. Now you can leave it as a plain page if you want to, or you could um, go over to Creative Fabrica, for example. You can see that there are a ton of images that you might want to use. So you might want to put something like this um, around the edge of the paper so that the customer has something to color in, as well as doing a word search or, or just to make it a little bit prettier. It is completely a design choice and completely up to you. But that really is as, as simple as it gets in terms of creating the interior for your puzzle books. Now, of course, you're going to want to then go ahead and create your cover. Again, I would use Creative Fabrica because there are just thousands upon thousands of images um, that you can use. I know um, by using the licenses that the images are not going to cause any issues with um, with copyright or anything. Um, again, I'm, I'm going to think about who my target customer is. You know, I might go for something like this, uh, something maybe a bit bit more vintage. That's kind of cute. Um, again, it's it's completely a design choice, but you need to be referring back to your research that you did earlier so that you know what's selling and how would yours stand out. As always with KDP, 
it is not a case of just slapping something together and then hoping for the best. Make sure that you are creating something that is high quality, that is well researched, that is well thought out. If you found any value in this video, please give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you guys next time. Take care.